team. And this is Dr. Mian Riaz from Texas A&M University. And uh, I'm going to be giving talk on some of the serious issues we have it uh, with the halal standards. Basically, there are quite a few different standards and industry is confused. And I'm going to see how can we harmonize these standards for the food industry. Some background, basically, that uh, I'm sure that uh, everybody know halal is not anymore a niche market. Uh, it is a multi-billion dollar business. Food industry realized the importance of this uh, halal food. And actually, they want to produce halal food for the consumer, but they are facing some very serious issues. Uh, they are confused and they are looking for direction to produce halal food because they are they don't know which way to go. Confusion is basically based upon different halal standards, not for actually different countries, but sometimes it is for the same country on import and export requirements because they will have some different requirements to import and export and food industry is totally confused uh, you can see here that called a halal dilemma. There's no single defined standard that exists. Uh, you can specify your own standards and then it's not accepted in other countries. That's the issue we are facing it. And on the top of that, the other issues the food industry is facing is that toxic environment among halal certifying bodies that are making food industry confused. One certifying body say, my standard is right. Other certifying bodies say, no, my standard is right. There's no uniform and guidelines for the halal food production. And that's why the food industry is in serious trouble. I give you an example. One country rejects the shipping and other accept the same shipment in the same region. I remember one of the incidents went to somewhere in the Middle East and one of that small country said, we don't accept it, but the other one said, okay, we will accept that one. Therefore, food industry is in dilemma. Why is that happening? What standards should they follow to make a food which is acceptable all over the world? Most of that halal certified body also do not accept some other halal certificates and uh, which is a very serious issue for the multinational companies. Sometimes they have to get three, four different halal certifications because one of the halal certified body will not accept certificate from the other organization, other certifying bodies. And also, it is a lot of waste of money for that uh, food industry because they have to get multiple halal certification for the same product and uh, food industry actually need one halal standard, which can fit for their every manufacturing location. For example, if a company like Nestle or Cargill, they have 70 or 80 or 100 different plants in different countries, and they make their own universal guidelines, their own universal rules that could fit for all the 70 plants in different countries to fulfill the halal requirements. It's more economical, labeling is easy, no confusion. There's one person who is liaison for all these countries and he or she are working together to make sure each follow the same guidelines. They do not have to make different policies for each their location. They don't have to make different requirements for each locations, they can just follow one standard of all their 80 plants in maybe 30 different countries and produce the halal food. That's what the food industry needs. There are several different models that exist for the different countries. Some of these uh, models are based on import and export requirements. Some of them based upon different school of thoughts. Some of them are uh, models are modified because of each country's internal regulations and they don't allow certain things. Therefore, they have to basically modify that. Therefore, that is uh, 
some of uh, the models you will see is basically people like to do the halal verification with the lab testing analysis versus some of them like to do with halal traceability via certifications. For example, if you have one uh, product being made, let's say, for example, sausage, they want to verify, do the testing, there's no poor contamination. On the other hand, some models, they will trace back the certification process from slaughtering all the way to manufacturing to see there was no contamination. Then there are stunning versus non-stunning meat. Therefore, gelatins uh, from different sources, colors from different insects, alcohol levels in food, and GMO food, all they are very major issues in halal certification. Halal certification with lab analysis versus halal traceability via certification is entirely two different things. I remember one time there was uh, halal sausages which arrived one of the Muslim country and after consumer was start using them, somebody did the analysis and they found out there was pork DNA in it. But it was too late because consumer already have started eating it. Therefore, that didn't work analysis. But on the other hand, some people like to see the traceability see who slaughtered it, when it was slaughtered, and how it was made, and they have certification from all the way through, so there is no any contamination. You can trace any hamburger or meat or any other product from all the way from where the animal was raised and how it was, you know, what was fed, how was who slaughtered it, who processed it, and then, of course, who made that hamburger via certifications. And sometimes uh, that is uh, better than doing the analysis on the end. You don't know where the contamination takes place. Therefore, traceability-wise, we can trace it from either backward or we can do it forward, and we should be able to do the traceability very easily by checking the records of different products. Uh, this is the example I gave to you guys earlier. That is this, have it, uh, some sausages that arrived and then they found out it contained pork. Therefore, when they analyzed, it was too late. It was already being consumed by a lot of Muslims. Therefore, that didn't work. Then we have a standard about uh, stunning versus uh, non-stunned meat. Some of the halal certifying agency will accept stunning, and some of them will not accept stunning. And uh, basically, some of them say slightly stunned, not to kill. And for what kind of uh, standards does a slaughterhouse need to follow? Slightly stunned, not stunned, or stunned. And of course, the uh, same is true or the gelatin that comes from different sources, that uh, if the stunned animals are okay to get the gelatin, if there was hand slaughter or mechanical slaughters, and uh, what is the source of the gelatin and how it was processed. We have also issues with the colors from different insects, and uh, everybody, some of the country will accept some of the colors from the insects and some of them will not accept that one. A uh, very common example is carmine. Uh, it may be controversial because some of the certifying agencies will not accept in some countries. But on the other hand, some do. What a food industry should do? How would they know which country is going to accept or not and how they're going to make a product or should they make the product for each country separately? There are some other materials from insect, lac, shallot, and algae. It is uh, sold to be used in different uh, food applications. Once again, it is controversial. Some of that, a lot of certifying bodies say, do not accept. 
these ingredients, whereas other do. Therefore, that's the other issue we have it. The other major issue is the alcohol level in the food. As you can see, there are different levels of alcohol that is accepted from different countries. It can range from not allowed to all the way to 0.5 or 1% even. Therefore, some countries say 0.1, some say 1, some say 0.5. And if, there, if you are the flavor company, do you need to make a flavor with each different concentration of alcohol to each country? Or uh, what should they do? How many different plants they need to set up for each country so they can fulfill their requirements? How can we solve all this issue, which I have discussed very briefly, that how can we make sure that food industry has one uniform standards, uniform thing like that. There are different options that uh, we, which allow us to make standard from farm to fork. That means we can start from slaughterhouse or from the field of that agriculture crops or ingredients, and we can follow all the way to suppliers and we should be able to make it very uniform standards. Suggestion will be that we need to review each standard, and then we need to find some major differences in these standards. Uh, we need to discuss these differences with the technical and religious scholars on these differences, and hopefully they will agree on some of that common halal standards which is acceptable to both parties. I know some of them are very rigid and some of them are very lenient. The both party has to work and has to come up somehow in the middle ground so that it's benefit to the food industry. Right now, because of differences in these standards, food industry is one who's losing all the money and who are having issues because they have no idea which standard do need to follow. It's easy to say then agreed on one common standard. I understand that. I said it very easily that two parties need to sit down and discuss the differences and then agreed on the common standard. And it is not that easy. Uh, I think we have to leave our differences we have to get some technical people there. We have to get some religious people there. And we need to have a platform for Muslims, halal parties. And we need to come up with the uniform halal standards. There is no other options. Uh, we can keep talking. And also we can make it one uniform halal standards. And then, of course, we can give that to food industry. And then if there is a need for slight change, I'm sure they can follow, but at least they should have one uniform halal standard first. Uh, this is the one which is the highest level of standards. And then of course they can maybe a little bit modify themselves, which is easy for them. But right now it's very, very confusing. If I was a guy who's making a flavor, I have no idea what percentage of alcohol I need to keep in my flavors. If I am making a candy, can I use my color from the insects? And at the same time, as I'm in the meat business, I'm getting some ingredients from the animals. Animal was stunned, but it was halal slaughter. Are animal was manually slaughtered or not? If all these things, I think we need to have a good discussion with scholars of all different faiths, all different regions, and then propose that to a uniform body to different countries and somehow we need to come up with all that halal standard and uh, can help the food industry. I know that I said it very easily that uh, you can, we should be able to do that. But as I said earlier, it is easy to say then actually to do it, but somebody has to do it. If we have to come up with that and we should be able to do that with that, uh, my conclusion will be uh, we need to be uh, very serious on the halal standards because it is a very, very big business. If we are not serious in the halal standards, then, of course, 
non muslim organization will take over the standards like they are already taking over so uh, iso and some other organizations you can name it brc and all that and they will be doing all our halal as well we need to follow one halal standard which is universally accepted with no confusion to the food industry we do not need a 300 halal standards i just throw the number 300 but we do not know each certifying body has their own standard we do not need that many standards we don't want to make food industry confused luckily food industry here is willing to work with us because that is their business and they are making the money but they can only help us if we don't make them confused they we can only help they can help we can help them if they know what kind of product we need to produce with that i will be uh finishing my presentation and maybe later on happy to answer any question we may have it thank you very much jazakallah khair assalam alaikum